or let's talk more about this with Paige Pate. He is a criminal defense attorney in Atlanta. Paige, where to start here? Let, let's start with the defense. Seems like a difficult case to prove that a, a wife mistakenly pushes her husband off of a cliff. That's an awfully big mistake to make. It is. It's a very difficult defense to prove, especially when you have the person who's on trial already making inconsistent statements about what she said happened. You know, the first story was he went out with friends, he didn't come back, and only later did she change her story to say it was self-defense. I thought he was grabbing for me, I tried to move my arm away, and then somehow uh, in the scuffle he ended up falling over the side of the cliff. So they have an incredible burden to meet in this trial. That said, no one else was there. And now the prosecution says, suggests that the husband was pushed, you know, face first off the cliff. How do they prove that? Well, it's going to be interesting. There was a pretrial hearing to determine whether the prosecutors could use this blindfold that they, fe that they found at the bottom of the cliff. There is some DNA evidence on that blindfold or that piece of cloth that the prosecutors will attempt to tie uh, to their theory that she blindfolded him, took him to this location, and then pushed him off. The judge at this point said, I'm not going to allow it in because I don't see the connection, but he did leave open the opportunity for the prosecutors to tie it up later and so it may come in as evidence at trial. And we are expecting to hear from a whole lot of experts, forensic experts, talking about how he was pushed, how he was shoved. How important will they be to each side's case? Well, as you mentioned before, John, we don't have any eyewitnesses in this case. So when you don't have eyewitnesses, you really need to piece together uh, the other evidence in the case. And here it's forensics. Uh, I also understand there's going to be some communication evidence about emails and, and other uh, discussions that she may have had with other individuals to try to cover up where she was that day. Uh, so we're going to hear a lot of testimony, and it'll be up to the prosecution to try to bind it together with a theory that works. You know, what about her? What about Jordan Graham? It's always a big risk to put the defendant on the stand. But in this case, you really need to curry sympathy with the jury. You need to sort of get a sense of what was going on in her head, probably. Might it be a, a risk worth taking putting her on the stand? I think so, but good defense lawyers will always wait until that point in the trial when they have to make that decision. Uh, usually if your client has already made statements to the government that help her, uh, then you won't put her up on the stand. We saw that in the Zimmerman case, but here her statements to the FBI hurt her. So I do think there will be at least uh, the consideration by the defense team of putting her up on the stand to at least explain those statements. And then the circumstances here, Paige, this was eight days after they were married. I have to believe that's just gonna hang over the jury this entire case, eight days after they were married. This is not how newlyweds are supposed to act. No, <laughs> far from it. Uh, you know, there was also some evidence that she had even threatened to kill her parents, and the judge did disallow that. Um, the prosecutor said, look, this shows her intent, that it was not an accident, but at this point, that evidence is not coming in. But the prosecutors still have a very solid case. All right, it will be interesting to see how this plays out, to be sure. Paige Pate, thanks so much for being with us. Really appreciate it. Thank you, John.